So you might think that history is boring, but actually I find it quite interesting because by uh, knowing where we come from, you can help design a better future. So hello, my name is Mercedes and today I will be talking about the people who made current computers possible. In another episode, uh, Mike talked to you about what a computer or a modern computer looks like. And it's a set of interconnected components such as the memory, the processor, etc. all working together to make calculations. But as a matter of fact, computers didn't always look like that. Uh, the first original computers actually look nothing like this. They look like this. The first computers were actually people and most often women. So in the 40s and before that, a computer used to be a job title. So people with the job title of computers were hired to do repetitive calculations, such as calculating the planetary positions for astronomers. And they would use things like calculators or doing it by hand or doing things such as using an abacus. Katherine Johnson is one of the most famous human computers. She worked at NASA from the 50s to the 80s as a human computer and she helped put men on the moon. However, these calculations were really boring and took a lot of time, so people started thinking about ways of making them automatic. All of this started all the way back to the 19th century with Charles Babbage, who designed the first computer as we know it today, and he called it the analytical engine. So as you can see, it looks more like an engine than a computer. So the analytical engine worked by using punching cards. Punch cards uh, looked a little bit something like this. Even these are modern versions of the ones originally designed by Babbage. Babbage had a very limited view of the uh, analytical engine. He only saw it as a huge calculator in which you would give it numbers and operations and that's it. Now enter Ada Lovelace. Ada Lovelace was a gifted mathematician who saw the future of the analytical engine go beyond a calculator. She thought, instead of just giving it operations and calculations, why don't I just give it instructions? And that is what constitutes a computer program. And that's why we consider Ada Lovelace the first computer programmer in history. But it wasn't until more than 100 years after Babbage that the first general purpose computers were built. During the Second World War, because all the world was at war, all the countries were trying to advance their technology. In Germany you had Z3, in the UK you had Colossus, and in the States you had ENIAC. Now, these computers were still very different from the computers that you're used to right now. For example, ENIAC weighted 30 tons, so that's the equivalent of 5 elephants. During World War II, another major player in the history of computer also made his mark, Alan Turing. So Alan Turing is most famously known for breaking the German code during the war, but actually his work also laid the basics for modern computer science, including how computers work. So Alan Turing was the first one that theorized that a computer could have the memory inside itself. So a computer didn't need any punch cards or any external information anymore. A computer was self-sufficient and able to make all the operations calculations that it needed by itself. He called that a universal computing machine, but because his contribution was so big, uh, we now call that a Turing machine. One of the first Turing machines were developed by the University of Manchester and it's called the Manchester Baby. Up until this point, all the computers that had been created were analog and used things like electronic valves like these. So that meant that the computers were really big and took the size of a whole room. The first breakthrough that made possible to reduce the size of these computers were transistors. These were developed by Bell Laboratories and they were put into computers for the first time in the 50s. After transistors came integrated circuits or chips, which allowed for computers to become even smaller. So since 1945 with ENIAC in 74 years we've gone from having a computer that takes a whole room to a computer that can fit in a space smaller than a coin. We've talked about some key people uh, in the history of computer science today. If you want to learn more, keep watching uh, Debug Junior.